This month's lesson goes out to Team Proof School and their head of school, Sam Vanderbilt. Sam and I go way back. I first saw Sam way back in 1985 when we were both competitors at National Math Counts. Now I saw Sam, but he didn't see me. I saw Sam because he was one of the top 10 students up on the stage. But I wasn't, so he didn't see me. We didn't finally meet until high school when we were at this camp where they took the top six students to be on the United States math team. Sam was on that team, but again, I wasn't. But that's okay, that's okay, you know how it goes. If you can't beat them, join them. So this month, I'm on Team Proof School. I'm catching up to you, Sam. Now let's get to work. First problem. So far, Ricardo has scores of 13, 17, 19, and 21 points for the first four rounds of a dice game. What does he need the total score to be for the next two rounds combined in order to achieve an average score of 20 points per round for all six rounds? Now we're going to solve this problem two different ways. Because if you solve the same problem two different ways, get the same answer both times, you can be pretty confident that you have the right answer. I think I learned that strategy from Sam. Now, our first strategy, we're going to think about what the total score is over all six rounds. Now, for these six rounds, we need the average to be 20 points per round. So if the average is 20 for these six rounds, when we add up all the scores, we have to get a total sum of those six rounds times that average score of 20 points per round. Six times 20, the total of all six rounds has to be 120. Well, now let's think about what Ricardo has so far in these first four rounds. We just add up Ricardo's scores. 13 and 17, that gives us 30. 19 and 21 gives us another 40. 30 and 40 gives us a total of 70. So then we think about what Ricardo needs in those last two rounds. We just take away the 70 points from his first four rounds from the 120 total that he needs in all six rounds. He needs 50 points total in those last two rounds. So that's strategy number one. Let's try strategy number two. Now all six of Ricardo's scores have to average to 20 when we add up. All six of those scores, we get six times that average, six times the 20. So these scores below average, if we think about the total below average these scores are, that total has to equal the total that these scores up here above average are above the average. The scores below average have to balance out the scores that are above average. We get the sum of all of them to be six times that average. So we're going to think about what each of these scores is relative to that average. This 13 is 7 below 20. It's 7 below the average that we want. 17 is 3 below our target average. 19 is 1 below. And 21 is 1 above. And then we need to throw in two more scores. Now when we're finished here, the scores that are below the average need to balance the ones that are above average. And I see right away these two balance each other out. One below, one above, they cancel each other out. Then I'm left with these two. These two that are a total of 10 below average. Well, I need these two out here then to be 10 above average total to balance out. 10 below average over here, these two together have to be 10 above average. Now, it could be plus 5 and plus 5, so we'd have scores of 25 and 25, or it could be plus 2 and plus 8, so the rounds are 22 and 28. It could even be minus 6 and plus 16. One round of 14, another round of 36. Whatever it is, these two have to be a total of 10 above average. So these two here have to be a total of 10 above two 20s. And two 20s gives us 40, and then that 10 above gets us up to 50. Got the same answer two different ways. I'm pretty sure we're right. On to the next problem. 
All right, here we go. The sum of six consecutive integers, the least of which is 30, can also be written as a sum of five consecutive integers. We have to find the greatest of these five integers. Let's start with the six consecutive integers. Let's start with 30. Let's get 31, 32, 33, 34, and 35. Now we want the sum of these. We could just add them all up. But I'm thinking back to that last problem. I have a group of numbers. I'm thinking about their sum. I have six numbers here. If I just take six and multiply by the average of these numbers, I'll get their sum. And these numbers, they're equally spaced out. They're consecutive numbers. So the average of these six numbers is the number that's right in the middle right in between 32 and 33. The average of these six numbers is 32 and a half. Now, if you don't believe me, check this out. Half below, half above. One and a half below, one and a half above. Two and a half below, two and a half above. The numbers below average balance, the numbers above average. Our average is right there. So the sum of these six numbers is six times their average. 6 times 32 and a half. Now I'm going to write that 32 and a half, 65 over 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And I have 3 times 65 is the sum of these numbers. Now I could multiply that out, but I still have to think about these five consecutive integers. And I don't want to do any work that I don't have to do. Might have learned that strategy from Sam. I suspect he probably learned that strategy from me. All right, here we go. Let's think about those five consecutive integers. Now we're going to have to add these five consecutive integers. And, well, we could use the same kind of strategy here. The sum of these five consecutive integers will just be five times the average of these consecutive integers. And the average of these five consecutive integers is going to be the integer in the middle. So when I use a variable, to describe these five integers, I'm going to assign that variable to the number in the middle. Watch what happens. I'm going to let n be the middle of these five consecutive integers. So the numbers before it are n minus 1 and n minus 2. Numbers above it are n plus 1, n plus 2. And now you can really see why when we add these five up, we're going to get five times that middle number, 5 times n, because the minus 1 cancels with the plus 1, minus 2 cancels with the plus 2. And this sum has to equal this sum. And now we see why I didn't bother multiplying that out. I'm going to have 5 times n equals 3 times 65. Divide both sides by 5, n is 3 times 13, which you know is 39. Tempting to write that down and move on, but got to read the question. We're looking for the greatest of these five integers. n is 39. The greatest of these integers is n plus 2. 39 plus 2, our answer is 41. How to do, Sam? Do I get to stay on Team Proof School?